The Jets had a huge victory on Sunday over Buffalo, but just as important, they showed that they are giving their young quarterback a legitimate chance to develop. What are the Jets doing right with Zach Wilson? That's what we'll talk about today on the Locked On Jets podcast. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome. This is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Tuesday, November 8th, 2022, and I'm your host, John B. from GangGreenNation.com, thanking you for making this show your first listen or first watch every day. This podcast is free, and it's available on all platforms, including YouTube. If you like what you see or hear, hit the subscribe button wherever you're watching or listening. You'll never miss an episode. If you're watching on YouTube, please give this episode a big thumbs up. Helps the channel out, and it helps other Jets fans find the podcast. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide. And they have a special offer for my listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. Well, the Jets are in their bye week, and what a way to go into their bye week. They beat the Buffalo Bills, the top team in the American Football Conference on Sunday. They improved their record to 6-3. and They showed that this team, at least for 2022, is for real. Another good thing that came from the game was that Zach Wilson kind of broke out of his three-week slump. He had played poorly the last three games, even though the Jets won two of those games. Now, Wilson's stat line, not spectacular, 18 of 25, 154 yards, a touchdown. So, you know, a decent completion percentage, only 6.2 yards per attempt. But it was enough for the Jets to win. It was enough for the Jets to, you know, Wilson did enough in the game, working within the confines of the game plan to help the Jets get a victory. And I think as much as anything, this game displays that the Jets are giving Zach Wilson a chance to develop in a way that they maybe did not with Sam Darnold, or if you want to go back far enough, Geno Smith, who is now having an excellent year with the Seattle Seahawks. The Jets have been in the habit of put, putting young quarterbacks in, into impossible situations. The way I view it is there are two types of young quarterbacks who enter the league. There are the guys who are NFL ready, ready to step into the lineup and play effectively. And you know the guys I'm talking about, you know, the Justin Herberts of the world, players like that. And then you have the guys who really are not ready. You have the guys who step into the lineup, but they're still kind of figuring things out. And that's the majority of quarterbacks. That's where Zach Wilson fits in right now. And with these young quarterbacks, one thing I've kind of come to believe is that you have to give them a chance. You have to do as much as possible to help them out. There are quarterbacks who lift their teams up, but they're usually a few years into their career. You know, it's usually not year one, year two. What you want out of a quarterback who's in his first or second season is to make enough plays, you know, do enough good things, avoid big mistakes, but really it's important for the team to lift that quarterback up because that quarterback's not going to be able to lift you up most weeks. And that's been the case with Zach Wilson this year. There have been some moments where Zach Wilson has struggled quite a bit. And then there have been some moments where he's been okay. And you you even have that fourth quarter against Pittsburgh, which was one of the rare instances where he did lift this team up. But I think on Sunday, the Jets showed you that they've at least got the pieces in place. Now, a lot of this is going to come down to whether Zach can take advantage of it. But the Jets have put an infrastructure in place that is going to allow a young quarterback to develop. And what are the key components of this? Well, that's what we're going to talk about on today's show. And number one, I think, is they found potentially a go-to guy for Zach Wilson, and that's Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson's had two back-to-back strong games. This week against Buffalo, he had eight catches, 92 yards. In fact, I mean, he had 92 receiving yards. Zach Wilson threw for 154 yards in this game. So that shows you how important, how integral Garrett Wilson is to this offense right now, how important he is to Zach Wilson. I said this yesterday, and I think it's true. I don't think Corey Davis getting injured is a good thing for the Jets. I think the Jets are a better team with Corey Davis in the lineup. But I think that there's an argument to be made that Corey Davis missing a couple of games might end up being a bit of a blessing in disguise for the Jets because it's forcing Zach Wilson to look other places. And obviously one of the key places is Garrett Wilson. I mean, I just told you Zach Wilson 
154 passing yards on Sunday, 92 to Garrett Wilson, 18 completions, 8 to Garrett Wilson. That's the guy he's looking to right now. That's his go-to guy. And when Corey Davis, and we know he's comfortable with Corey Davis, when Corey Davis comes back, that gives you another option. And I'll tell you a reason that I think this is, this is really important. Is like a lot of young quarterbacks, one thing I've noticed is that Zach Wilson is much better at pre-snap reads than he is at post-snap reads. Now, especially in an offense like Michael LaFleur runs, you're trying to give force the defense to, to tip its hand pre-snap. And that's one of the reasons the Jets run so much, so much motion, because when you run motion, you force the defense to kind of adjust, you force the defense to change its alignments. And frequently what happens when you cha- when the defense changes its alignments is, depending on what they do, you can kind of guess what the defense is running. You, you, you can't, the, the defense kind of has to tip its hand because you know that the defense is going to do a certain thing if you have this formation. But if you move to that formation, the defense is going to do something else. And you can kind of figure out what they're doing. And that's one of the reasons that this offense is considered somewhat quarterback friendly. In, in some ways, it's not. In, in some ways, it's a tough offense for a quarterback to pick up. But in a lot of ways, it is kind of a quarterback friendly offense from the standpoint that the motions essentially force the defense to tip its hands. And that's also one of the reasons you, you see some of the formations. Sometimes a formation can force a defense to show you whether it's playing man, whether it's playing zone, what type of coverage it's in. And Zach Wilson right now, I think, is better at making those reads than he is post-snap reads. Because when, when you make a post-snap read, you receive the snap, and essentially you have to figure out whether what the defense showed pre-snap is accurate. And if it is, then you're fine. But if the defense is, was disguising its look, you have to be able to identify that in like two and a half seconds. It's not an easy thing to do, and it's an area where I think Zach Wilson's really struggling right now. So having a receiver like Garrett Wilson, especially the, st- the style of a receiver of a Garrett Wilson, because Garrett Wilson's the type of receiver who creates separation. Receivers can be successful all different ways in the NFL. You have guys who are you know burners who just you know take the top off of defense, who you know, run down the field really fast. You have your guys maybe more like a Denzel Mims, who's like a big body guy who you just throw the ball up to him and he makes a play. But I think for Zach Wilson at this point of his career, because the Post-snap reads can be a bit of an issue for him. Having a technician, a guy, a guy who gets separation in the short area of the field like Garrett Wilson is really important because in some ways it becomes academic whether your quarterback makes the correct post-snap read because, you know, it doesn't really matter what the defense is doing. If your primary target on the play can get open and get separation, well, your quarterback doesn't really need to read the defense because... You know, his first read's open, so it doesn't matter if, you know, if he's expecting cover three and they throw cover two at him. Well, if your first read's open, it doesn't really, you know, who cares? You just get him the ball. And that's one of the things that I think can help nourish a young quarterback. It's one of the things that can help build success. And again, I go back to this, and I've thought this through because we've seen so many Jets young quarterbacks fail. I think as much as anything, what destroys a young quarterback is just failure, consistent failure. Of course, you want a young quarterback to be able to to shake off bad moments. Every quarterback's going to have bad moments. They're going to have bad games. They're even going to have a bad month here or there, but you can't have it be, you know, two full seasons where you're losing games. You're getting blamed. You don't really know what defenses are throwing at you. You need to build in areas where a young quarterback can have success. And there are a few things that help a young quarterback, like a go, a go-to guy, a guy who can be the primary read on a lot of plays who, you know, is going to get open. And again, forces the court, doesn't force the quarterback to really read a defense. Essentially the quarterback can see what they're doing pre-snap and, you know, the guy's going to get open off it. And you don't need the quarterback to scan the entire field. And this is one of the things I go back to over and over. It's not easy in the NFL. There are not that many quarterbacks in the NFL who can scan the entire field consistently and make good throws. And to the extent there are quarterbacks who can do it, frequently it takes them years to figure it out. So the Jets are kind of trying to keep Zach Wilson afloat right now. And a receiver like Garrett Wilson, especially the way he played on Sunday, and I'd say even the way he played last week against New England in a game where Zach Wilson did not play well, he's showing that he can potentially be that guy, be that security blanket that Zach knows when the chips are down. He can look to that guy. He can look to number 17, the guy with the same last name as him, get him the ball, and trust that there's going to be a successful play. So to me, this is like one of the biggest things is Garrett Wilson's development as the number one receiver. You know, a lot of us heading into the season thought maybe it's going to be Elijah Moore. Needless to say, not working out so well on that front. You know, Denzel Mims has shown a little bit of life the last couple of weeks, but 
you know, he profiles as maybe more of a backup type than a guy who's going to be a go-to guy. But Garrett Wilson, he's looking like a real player for Zach Wilson. He's looking like the kind of guy who can make a difference, material difference in Zach Wilson's development. But it's not just Garrett Wilson on offense that helped the Jets on Sunday. As we continue this Tuesday episode of Locked On Jets, we're going to talk about the run game. This is a run-based offense. They ran the ball really effectively against Buffalo, and that's going to be a, that's something that's really important for Zach Wilson. I'll explain why as we continue this Tuesday episode. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. I think we've all learned the last couple of years that taking care of your mental health is just as important as taking care of your physical health. And there are many different ways you can take care of yourself on the mental health side. You can try meditation, you can try exercise, you can try talking to a friend, but therapy is a great option for many people. It has a lot of broad benefits. It helps you learn coping skills, self-empowerment. It helps you deal with trauma. Everybody deserves to feel their best, and BetterHelp makes it easier to get started. As the world's largest therapy service, they've matched millions of people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. It's all the benefits of in-person therapy, plus it's more convenient, more accessible, and more affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. And if things are not clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It could not be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Thank you for making Locked On Jets your first listener, first watch every day. The show's free and it's available on all platforms, including YouTube. We're talking about Zach Wilson today. We're talking about the way the Jets helped him out against the Buffalo Bills and what it means for his development going forward. Because unlike recent Jets young quarterbacks who have pretty much been thrown into impossible situations, the Jets have given Zach Wilson a legitimate chance to develop. And I've come to really believe that how you develop a quarterback can make a material difference. It doesn't matter with everybody. There are some quarterbacks who, uh, Christian Hackenberg's a guy who comes to mind, it doesn't really matter what the Jets did with Christian Hackenberg. He was just not good enough. And then, you know, on the other end, you have a guy like Peyton Manning, who, you know, if no matter where you put Peyton Manning back in 1998, he was going to be successful. He was going to lift the franchise up from practically day one. But a lot of other, a lot of, most quarterbacks fall somewhere between the two extremes. And to varying degrees, how a team approaches their development matters. And unlike other Jets quarterbacks, I'm really happy with the way the Jets are bringing Zach Wilson along because he's clearly a quarterback who needs a lot of work. You know, he's not there yet. He's not a guy who's going to maybe occasionally, like the Pittsburgh game, he's going to be able to lift the Jets up, take a, t- take the team on his back. But that's not going to happen consistently. And the Jets are going to need to do more to help Zach Wilson at this point in his career, at least, than Zach Wilson is going to be able to do to help the Jets. On Sunday, they found a good formula. Part of it was that they gave him a receiver to make things easy. It's As I said in the first segment, it's pretty easy. To, it's much easier to play quarterback in this league when you know your first read's going to be open, when you can trust that guy to get open. But the Jets also did an effective job running the ball. And this is Mike LaFleur, and we've talked for the last two years about the quote-unquote Shanahan offense, how a lot of it's based on running the ball first. Well, on Sunday's game, Jets ran the ball 34 times for 174 yards. They only threw 25 times. And they netted 136 yards. Zach Wilson threw for 154, but you take out uh, sack totals, and it gets down to 136. So this was a run-based offense on Sunday. And, it, you know, the, the key moment of the game, obviously, was the Jets taking over on their own four-yard line about halfway through the fourth quarter and driving into Buffalo scoring range without throwing a pass. And then Zach Wilson did hit a pass, a slant to Denzel Mims to move the chains. That was a critical third down play because it helped the Jets run some more time off the clock, gave Greg Zorline an easier field goal. But this was a run-based offense on Sunday. And, I mean, you can look at the numbers. I mean, the two guys who starred, Michael Carter, 12 carries, 76 yards, James Robinson, 13 for 48. And, you know, James Robinson was under four yards per carry, but he was an effective player on, on Sunday. He was an effective runner. And on that last drive, he kind of ignited things with those first three runs. So Jets were able to run the ball effectively. And I go back to what I always say. You don't want to force your quarterback to stand back in the pocket 50 times and scan the, scan the whole field. You want to make things easy on him. So one of the ways you make things easy on him is you get him a receiver like Garrett Wilson, where you know he's going to be open. Another thing that you do to make easy things things easy for him, you have a run game. And we know the Jets' offensive line is kind of patchwork right now. So I give a lot of the credit to these backs. And I give even more credit to Michael Carter because he, he stepped up on Sunday. 
Jets don't have Brees Hall anymore. Life was actually kind of easy with Brees Hall because that game against Green Bay, the game against Miami the week earlier, the game, even a game against Denver where he got hurt, he still had that long touchdown run. Easy to run an offense when you have somebody like a Brees Hall where you can pretty much call the play, you just give the ball to him. You don't really need to throw the ball. You don't really need to do anything else. I mean, you don't even necessarily need to block that effectively for a Brees Hall. Sunday was a little bit different. You know, Sunday, they did not have Brees Hall, and you missed that home run element. But the Jets still have two good backs on this team. I, I said this during the course of the offseason, that it's a bit of a luxury to have somebody like Michael Carter as your number two back, because in my mind, Michael Carter is a legitimate number one back in this league, and he was essentially the kind of the the change of pace guy when Brees Hall was in the mix. But they also made what I thought was a really smart trade for James Robinson right before, the, or you know, maybe a week before the trade deadline after Brees got injured because James Robinson's a good back. Neither of these guys is Brees Hall. And what I think you really miss is that home run element. I don't think you have that guy who can make the big plays anymore. So some of that's going to fall to the passing game. I think, I think the big play element, a lot of that's going to fall to Garrett Wilson going forward. You have to, you know, you can't always replace a play. You can't always replace a great player like Brees Hall with just one player. It has to be kind of spread around the roster. So part of it's going to, I think the big play element is going to be Garrett Wilson, but the running effectively aspect of it, I mean, that's going to be Michael Carter and that's going to be James Robinson. Jets have a pair of really solid backs. And let's say you need 20 first downs to, let's say the typical team in the NFL needs 20 first downs to win a game. When you can hand it to the backs, when you can take that off your quarterback's load, when you can just say, you know what? We're going to run the ball. We're going to get a good chunk of these first downs by running the ball. That's a you know that's something that really helps a quarterback. That's something that makes life much easier for a Zach Wilson because you're also keeping him out of those bad downs and distances. You know when you look at the numbers in the NFL, interceptions big the big mistakes happen. They're almost a result of the situation you're in. You know I think sometimes we think a team loses because of interceptions, which freak, which does happen, but more frequently. Interceptions happen because you're in a bad situation, because you're in a you know third and long, because you're you know playing behind the sticks, Be- and those are situations where the defense has an advantage because you become one dimensional. You know if you're in third and long, you can't really run the ball, so defenses they don't really need to respect the run. You know typically on the snap, defenders kind of have to hold their spot for at least a little bit because they need they're they're responsible for a certain area of the field defending against the run. You don't need to do that on third and long. You can just, you know, get after the quarterback and just fire up the field. And you also don't need to have somebody responsible for every area of the field. You don't need to. You don't need to have every gap filled because the not the offense is not going to run. So it just makes life easier. The the, uh, the receivers have to get down the field to get to their spot to get past the sticks. The offensive line needs to do a great job holding. I mean, when you get into it like a bad down and distance situation. You can have disaster without anybody inherently making a huge mistake on offense, but you get into a situation where the quarterback feels like he needs to put the ball into a tight window. He needs to force something to try and move the chains. It just creates bad situations. And when you can run the ball effectively on the early downs, like the Jets did on Sunday, it makes life easier because you avoid those ugly situations. You help yourself out and you help your young quarterback out. And again, when you're lifting up a young quarterback, part of it is just keeping him out of negative situations where disaster is more likely. And another way you do that is you hold the other team's offense down. You prevent them from turning the game into a shootout. And as we conclude this Tuesday episode of Locked On Jets, I'm going to talk about the role the defense plays in Zach Wilson's development. You may wonder, wait, defense? Zach Wilson plays offense. How's the defense help him? Well, I'll explain that. Stay tuned. Now, if you're a daily fantasy sports player and you had Michael Carter going for more than 75 yards on Sunday, you're probably doubly happy as a Jets fan because not only did the Jets win, but Michael Carter hit his number. And if you are a daily fantasy sports player, let me tell you about prize picks. Here's how it works. You pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. And prize picks offers projections on any sport you watch. So if you're a little bit hesitant about playing daily fantasy football because you don't want to pick players who are going against the Jets, potentially dividing your loyalty, you can play the NBA, you can play the NHL, you can play college football, men's and women's college basketball, esports, MMA, boxing, and disc golf. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. It's available in 30 states and Canada. 
you download the Prize Picks app, go to or go to PrizePicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 using promo code locked on. So if you deposit $50, Prize Picks gives you another 50. If you deposit 100, Prize Picks gives you another 100. And don't forget to don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100 using Prize Picks. This is the Locked On Jets podcast here on this Tuesday, talking about what the Jets are doing right as they bring Zach Wilson along. We've talked about giving him a top receiving option. We've talked about running the ball effectively. But believe it or not, I think the Jets playing good defense helps Zach Wilson a lot. Jets have won five games with Zach this season. The defense has allowed 14.6 points per game in those victories. I think that's a big deal because it minimizes what the offense needs to do to be victorious. And, you know, the most the you know the biggest example of this was the game a few weeks ago in Denver when Jets defense gave up nine points they only had to put up 16 points on offense but it's been one of the stories of the season so far the Jets have been a defense oriented team and obviously a lot of that goes back to Quinn and Williams a lot of it goes to their corner Sauce Gardner DJ Reed Jets are getting really solid performance out of their defense and you know while the safeties and linebackers have been up and down and you know they've made a few plays that have hurt the Jets they've also made some big plays that have helped the Jets this is a defense that's been driven by the defensive line and the corners, and they're playing at a really high level right now. And the reason this helps Zach Wilson goes back to something I said in the second segment. It's a, in a different context, though. I talked a bit about how you want you don't want to put your young quarterback in a situation where he needs to feel like feels like he needs to do too much, and that can come into play if you're putting him in a lot of bad downs and distances, lots of third and longs. But it also can come into play if you're putting him behind in games frequently. If you're, if you're going out there and giving up 14 points in the first quarter, you're down 14 nothing. your young quarterback's going to feel a need to press. He's going to need to take chances that maybe you don't want him to take because he feels like he needs to do it all to keep your team in the game. That's not happening with the Jets this year, and it helps them to play more conservatively. And if you look at the Jets' recent game plans, on at least throwing the ball, it's been pretty conservative. You know, they came out and they, they tried one deep shot to Denzel Mims on Sunday, but there were lots of short passes. The Jets did not press Buffalo down the field that frequently. And, you know, there were other reasons for that. And Bills have a ferocious pa- pass rush. Jets' offensive line, you know, they're piecing it together with guys who are backups on a, in a couple spots. And beyond that, I think part of the game plan on Sunday was the Jets were trying to play ball control. They were trying to keep Josh Allen on the sideline out of a rhythm. But part of it's also, you know, you don't want to take chances when you don't have to. And Zach Wilson's shown that, you know, he's still kind of figuring things out, reading the defense. Sometimes his decision-making is not that great. So you don't want him to get into a situation like he was against, like he was in New England, where, you know, he's throwing a lot of interceptions, where things kind of snowball on him, where he's losing his confidence. You want to keep his confidence level as high as possible. So that means lots of easy throws, lots of simple reads, you know, get the ball out quickly. And that's a luxury you can have when you have a great defense because it means you don't necessarily need to make a ton of explosive plays in the passing game to win. It means that you can trust that your defense is going to hold the opponent under 20 points. And when that happens, you just need efficient quarterback play. You don't need your quarterback to go out and throw for 300, 400 yards. You just need him to play efficiently, protect the football, maybe hit a few key passes here or there. And that's something that's easier for a young quarterback to do than it is for him to go and light it up. Occasionally, yes, you want to see Zach Wilson go out there and throw for 300 yards. And frankly, to this point in his career, it has not happened frequently enough. You know, but it doesn't mean Zach Wilson's career is done. And the more the defense can play effectively, the better a chance Zach Wilson's going to have to grow because you're not going to be in these situations where you're forcing the ball into triple coverage because you feel like you need a big play. And then you're not, and conversely, you're not going to spend the whole week listening about, you know, hearing the media talk about how you've fit a ball into triple coverage. You're not going to spend two months hearing about how you're losing because your quarterback's trying to play hero ball. If you play within yourself, play within your system, you got a shot to, you got a shot to win games. And you know, last week we did the crossover Thursday with, with Joe Marino of locked on bills. He said it perfectly. Zach Wilson needs to play within the confines of the system. You know, when he came out of BYU, he was a quarterback who was known as a playmaker. He was doing all this stuff outside the structure of the play call. Well, in the pros, it hasn't worked. You know, I mean, he really has not been very good, you know, outside the pocket, especially this year. When he's been effective, when he's been efficient, it's like when he's played Sunday, when he's just played within the confines of the system where he's hit his reads, he's known where to put the ball. In fact, on Sunday, probably the one mistake he made was the time he kind of abandoned the pocket where he kind of got out, got himself outside the structure of the play call. And, he, you know, he took a strip sack from Von Miller. Everything else was pretty solid. And it's easier to play within the confines of the offense. It's easier to not need to 
not feel like you need to force the ball down the field when your defense is doing the job, when you know, you know what, as long as I avoid, if I avoid the big mistake and we have to punt on this series, defense is going to do its job. I'm going to get the ball right back. We'll be, we'll be no worse for the wear. And this defense, I think, is playing at a very high level for Zach Wilson. And I think it helps Zach Wilson. You know, it sounds counterintuitive. How does the defense help a young quarterback? But I think it's help happening with the Jets. Anyway, that's all for today's episode. This has been the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. If you enjoy the show, hit the subscribe button wherever you're watching or listening. That way you'll never miss an episode. Hit the bell notification on YouTube. Also, if you're listening on a podcast source, please give the show a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give this episode a big thumbs up. These help the channel out and help other Jets fans find the podcast. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. Send in your mailbag questions. Tomorrow we will have our weekly mailbag show.